Right, welcome back. And in this section, we're going to talk about the NLP communication model. So according to Hungarian biologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi in his book Flow, he said we get bombarded by around 2 million bits of information per second, which come into us through our input channels. Now scientists now say that it's probably more than 11 million bits of information. But so what he said is that we can only process around 134 bits of information per second. And of course, my 134 bits of information out of that potentially 11 million can potentially be totally different to your 134 bits of information. You see, because I delete, generalize and distort my information differently based on my internal filters than you may. So what happens is we have this external event and that event then comes to us, these 11 million bits of information, and we take that in through our visual, our auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, which is smell, and gustatory, which is taste. And so out of that 11 million bits, that runs through our internal filters. And our internal filters would be time, space, matter energy, our language, our memories, our decisions, our meta programs and personality types, our values and beliefs and our attitudes. And those filters will then go ahead and we will delete, generalize and distort the information to take in our 134 bits out of that potential 11 million. And so deletion occurs when we selectively pay attention to particular aspects of our experiences and not to others. Like driving down the road. And, you know, when you drive down the road, you don't pay attention to every single signboard. Similarly, have you ever noticed that there is a new building or something that you hadn't noticed before and yet it was there all the time you see you simply deleted it because it wasn't important to you before then and without deletion we would be faced with far too much information for our conscious mind to actually handle now distortions happen when we make shifts of data in our sensory data by making misrepresentations of what's real for example, this can happen when we mistake somebody for someone else or imagining how somebody might look even before you have ever met them. Now, generalizations is where we draw like conclusions about someone or something based upon previous experience. To generalize can actually help us to learn by taking information we have and drawing conclusions about the meaning of the effect of those conclusions. Example, if you've ever burnt your hand on a hot plate once, you don't need to touch another hot plate to know that that will also burn. Now, the unfortunate side is this can also cause us to form limiting beliefs about ourselves and of course our capabilities based on previous failure. And that in turn, of course, can hold us back from doing that thing again for the rest of our life. So we delete, we generalize, we distort the incoming information. And we then go ahead and we form an internal representation. Now that internal representation is based on one of six things that we can do in our head. We create pictures, sounds, feelings, taste, smells, and of course the self-talk. And so, example of that, if I asked you to think of somebody that you really love, you may have a picture of that person in your mind. You may be able to smell their smell or feel what it feels like to give them a hug. Or you might be imagining saying something to them or them saying something to you. Or you might say something to yourself about how you feel about that person. And so those are examples of how this internal representation can be made up. Now, of course, remember that that's based on my 134 bits of information, which can be totally different to yours. You see, people can go to the same party and have different experiences because they delete, generalize and distort the information based on their 
own internal filters. And so that internal representation is then coupled with our state and coupled with our physiology to determine our external behavior. So our state would be happy state, sad state, and so forth. Where physiology would be, you know, how do you stand? How do you carry yourself? Are your shoulders uh, leaning forward and you're slouching? Or are you standing up proud, shoulders back, chest out? In fact, let me, let's do this as an example, if it's safe to do so. Why don't you go ahead and lean over your legs, over your knees. So as you do that, have your arms hang down beside your legs. You can do this seated or standing. And as you do that, I want you to breathe out and really slouch. Have your shoulders lean forward. And think of a time when, you know what, you really just were not interested in doing anything. And you breathe out and your shoulders are slouching and you get that feeling of really not interested. And then say to yourself in this tonality, I feel really awesome. And notice how congruent that is. Do you actually feel awesome? Well, probably not. So let's just shake that off. All right now, sit or stand up proud, shoulders back, chest out. Really think of a time when you did feel so amazing and say to yourself, I feel awesome. And just notice the difference. You see, if we can control our state or our physiology or our internal representations, then we can actually change our external behavior. So that's really interesting. Because it goes to show that we actually are in charge of our mind and we can control our state at any point in time. And so therefore we can actually control our behavior. So that's just a brief overview of the NLP communication model. In the next section, we're going to be talking about perception projection.